Hello everyone, welcome back. This is Easy Learn AI. In this video, I'd like to introduce you to GANs. GANs are one of the most important innovations in the history of deep learning. Today, we'll learn what GANs are, how they are structured, and how they work. Before we dive into what a GAN is, let's briefly look at what GANs can do. All the faces you see here are not real people. They are all synthetic faces generated by a GAN model called StyleGAN2. GANs can also change the style of images, even alter specific features in an image. Since GANs can do so many things, there are many types of GAN models. Today, we will study the basic GAN model, the foundation of all these advanced versions. As the name suggests, a GAN is a generative model. To understand the importance of GANs, let's first see where generative models fit in deep learning. Deep learning models are usually divided into discriminative models and generative models. From the perspective of mimicking human intelligence, AI needs to perform various tasks like humans. For example, once we learn the concept of a dog, we can identify a new dog as a dog, even if we've never seen it before. Moreover, we can categorize even abstract concepts. For example, computer games, board games, playing with friends, and sports like the Olympics, we group them all as games. Our brain can classify countless concepts based on specific criteria. So, an important feature of an intelligent model is how well it can classify given distributions. With this background, many classification models like Perceptron, CNN, and logistic regression were developed. But the human brain doesn't only classify. One of the brain's key functions is also generation. If we have an image of a dog in our mind, we can imagine and draw different forms of dogs. Generative models in deep learning aim to mimic this creative aspect of human intelligence. We are now in the golden age of generative models in deep learning. The GAN model we'll explore today is considered the model that opened this new era of generative learning. Now let's officially start learning about GANs. To understand how a GAN works, let's use a metaphor with two people. One person is a forger who creates fake artwork, and the other is an expert who tries to detect fakes. The forger's goal is to draw paintings that look like the real ones. At first, their drawings will look terrible, but over time, they'll improve to the point of being almost indistinguishable from the original. The expert's job is to decide whether a given painting is real or fake. At first, the expert will make mistakes, but with practice, they'll learn to spot even tiny differences. As the forger gets better, the expert also improves. As the expert gets sharper, the forger must produce even more realistic fakes. In a GAN, there is a generator that plays the role of the forger, and a discriminator that acts like the expert. These two models compete with each other and improve over time. Now, based on this idea, let's look at how these networks are structured. The architecture of a GAN can be shown like this. Let's first understand what the input and output are. The input is a one-dimensional vector, and the output is a single number between 0 and 1. The generator takes the 1D vector and creates a fake image. The discriminator takes the image and decides whether it is real or fake. The generator receives a random vector and tries to generate something like a human face. At the beginning, the generator's weights are random, and since the input is also random, the output at first will be unrecognizable. Now it's the discriminator's turn. We prepare real data to train the discriminator. Then we randomly choose either a real image or a fake one from the generator and input it to the discriminator. The discriminator doesn't know if the input is real or fake. It must decide just by looking at the data. If the input is real, it should output a value close to 1.0. If it's fake, it should output a value close to 0. This way, the discriminator gets better at telling real from fake. As the discriminator gets better, and the generator improves to fool the discriminator. Because the two parts learn in competition, we call it a generative adversarial network. 
Let's now look at how a GAN processes information and learns. We'll use a simple model for easy calculation. Both the generator and discriminator are single layer neural networks. The generator receives a random input value between 0 and 1. This input is multiplied with the generator's weights to produce an output. The generator outputs a three element vector, which means representing RGB color. The GAN also uses real data. In this example, the real data is defined as pure red. The learning goal is for the generator to produce values close to pure red. Either real or generated data is randomly given to the discriminator. The discriminator must decide whether the input is real or fake. Using the sigmoid function, the output becomes a value between 0 and 1. Now let's perform a forward pass calculation. Let's set the input z to 0 0.5. The generator weights are set randomly. For simplicity, we omit bias. The output of the forward pass is, like these values, set the discriminator's weights randomly too. If we input the real data as 1, 0, and 0, we can calculate like this, the output becomes about 0 0.6. Since it should be 1, this causes some loss. If we input the fake data as follows, we can calculate like this, the output is around 0 0.62. Because the expected value is 0, more loss occurs. Now we begin backpropagation. The GAN uses binary cross entropy as the loss function. Binary loss works well because the model classifies between 1, real, and 0, fake. It also tends to converge faster than MSE, which makes it suitable. Let's calculate the discriminator's loss first. When the input is real, the expected output is 1. The loss function can be rewritten like this. This part becomes zero and drops out. Also, since the real data is not related to the generator in any way, the output, probability, of the discriminator when given real data can be rewritten like this. So when training a GAN, if the input is real data, maximizing log of d of x cancels out the minus sign and leads to minimizing the loss. On the other hand, for fake data, the discriminator should output zero. The loss function can be rewritten like this. Similarly, this part evaluates to zero and drops out. The loss function can be rewritten like this. Since fake generated data starts from z, we can rewrite the equation as follows. But since d of g of z is the output of the discriminator for fake generated data, it should be close to zero. Therefore, we can see that log of 1 minus d of g of z also reaches its maximum when d of g of z is 0. So in summary, for the discriminator, when real data is given, it should maximize log d of x. The loss function of the discriminator for real data can be defined as follows. The loss function of the discriminator for fake data can be defined as follows. All right, let's start by computing the gradients for the discriminator through backpropagation. Of course, we'll use the chain rule. Training the discriminator basically means calculating how the loss changes with respect to its weights. So ultimately, training the discriminator comes down to calculating the following values. These values can also be partial L with respect to D equals 1 over D of X based on the derivative rule of the log function. Partial d with respect to w sub i is expanded as follows using the derivative rule of the sigmoid function. After cancelling out the zero terms, we can simplify it like this. By plugging in each value, we can compute the weight updates for the discriminator as follows. Then, if we set the learning rate to 0 0.01, the discriminator's weights will be updated as follows. In GAN training, we update the discriminator first, then use it to train the generator. Now let's look at the generator's loss function. Earlier, we mentioned that when real data is input to the discriminator, the goal is to maximize log of d of x. Similarly, the generator's goal is to use fake data 
to make it look as real as possible. In other words, the generator is trained to maximize the following function, so that the discriminator outputs 1 when it receives fake data. Training the generator also involves calculating how the loss changes with respect to the weight V. So in the end, training the generator comes down to computing the following value. Using the chain rule, it expands as follows. Using the derivative rule of the logarithm, partial L with respect to D becomes partial D with respect to X sub. I can be expanded as follows based on the definition of D of X. Also, partial X sub I with respect to V sub, I can be expanded as follows based on the definition of G of Z. After eliminating the zero terms and plugging in the values, we can now compute the following weight update for the generator. This process, where the discriminator and generator keep updating their weights in competition, is the general training flow of a GAN. That's the overview and example of GANs I've prepared for today. Thank you for watching today's video, and I wish you great success in your research and learning journey.